Good morning and welcome to online worship at Calvary Presbyterian Church. I'm Joanne Lee, Associate Pastor for Community Formation, and I'm joined by my colleagues Marcy and Victor and an amazing music team. We're so glad that you've joined us today. The online bulletin can be found online at calpres.org and the offering plate can be found there as well. Today is the second Sunday of Advent and our theme this year is Those Who Dream. There is a downloadable Advent devotional that should have been emailed to you. If you haven't received one and would like a copy, let us know and we can send it to you. As you may know, San Francisco is now in the purple tier until at least December 21st. So please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home when you can. As such, many of our hope for Advent and Christmas plans have changed, moving nearly exclusively online. We encourage you to continue to check Facebook, the website, and your emails for any updates that might happen. Candles that you can light for the Christmas Eve worship service can be picked up on Sunday, December 13th and Sunday, December 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. at the church. There are still some on the, uh, volunteer and giving opportunities during this season, which we hope that you will take part in. The outdoor giving tree, safe house stockings, and others. Especially this year, it can make a huge difference, so please give if you can. Friends, in this season of waiting, God calls us to dream big, hope-filled dreams. So I invite you to take a deep breath in and out as we prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So, family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves to God. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even though we are separated, God is among us. Family of faith, what we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way and worship holy God. Watch for the light of Christ this Advent. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. We light this candle as a sign of coming light of Christ. The light of Christ is always coming to us, entering our broken world and troubled hearts. We light the second candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing, our hope, for a deeper faith in a fairer world.
Friends, in this season of Advent, let us bring our whole selves to God, knowing and hoping that we are always God's beloved children. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we wish that hope was something we could buy. We wish that hope could be ordered in a subscription service, found on a map, downloaded in an app, or voted for in a ballot. We wish that hope was as easy as a one-time choice when we are feeling our best. However, what we have found is that hope involves everyday decisions over and over, whether or not we are feeling our best. So today I confess with others in this community of faith that I need your help in this Advent season. Prepare the way for greater hope and teach me how to be a part of it. Amen. Friends, God forgives us. God's guiding hands surround us. Be comforted. Be at peace. There is hope. There is always hope. On this second Sunday of Advent, may the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. Please share words and signs of hope with one another via the comments or those who are by you. Good morning. Today I would like to share some stockings with you. There are handmade stockings made by Tova Claussen. They are all going to our friends at Safe House. Let's count how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these stockings are ready. We are getting ready for Christmas, and so we are preparing these stockings for our friends at Safe House, and they will be given out to women on Christmas Eve. Some of these women have never received a stocking, so this is a wonderful time for them to feel loved and cared for by the Calvary community. So thanks to everyone for donating so many wonderful items. The first time I learned about stockings was from this book, The Sweet Smell of Christmas. And I love the last page because the bear in the story runs down the stairs to the fireplace and sees a stocking hanging there. A lot of people don't have stairs in their house and they don't have fireplaces, but they might have a sock available to put something in like an orange or some pine boughs or maybe a special toy. In these stockings, we find things like warm socks, some masks, lotions, special oils that smell good, like lavender scent, and we also have notebooks and papers and pens um, and many other fun items. So we want to bless these stockings. Reverend Glenda Hope started State Safe House many years ago, and unfortunately she couldn't be here today to bless these stockings, but she sends her blessings. And so we would like to say a prayer for Glenda and for Tony Ebby the director at Safe House, and all of the people who contributed to these stockings. Dear loving God, we thank you that you include all of us. You want us to feel welcome, and then you want us to welcome others. Thank you for all of the giving hearts that contributed to these gifts, and may they bless the people who receive them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. This is a reading from the Gospel of Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's Advent candle was for hope, the thing Emily Dickinson called the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. In Hebrew, the word for hope is tikva, which means expectation, looking for something eagerly from the root Kava, which means to wait for something. Now, Kava is also something physical. It is a strand of rope, something to hold on to. For people of faith, we cannot separate hope from waiting. The prophet Zechariah called us prisoners of hope. Perhaps you have felt a bit like a prisoner in a state of eternal waiting since COVID happened. But this week with the news of the British beginning vaccinations, our hope rope just got a little longer and our waiting will pay off. Please pray with me. Oh Lord, the flower fades and the grass withers, but your word, your truth endures forever. It is my prayer that in this sermon you will decrease me so that your word may increase. This I ask in the Holy Spirit's name. Amen. Waiting. The only thing I hate more than waiting is preparing for things that might happen. Probably won't. Might Recently, I came across our family's disaster preparedness bag. You know, the one that's supposed to have the medication and the food and the water. Ours contained a flashlight, 20 glow sticks, and a little bitty umbrella. So when the big one strikes on a rainy night during a rave, we are prepared, realizing that you don't know exactly how to prepare is sometimes essential for effective preparation. In the opening verses of Mark, the beginning of the good news, we meet a prophet from Jesus' own family, cousin John, the Baptist, son of Elizabeth. And of all the Jewish movements that arose in between the time of the Old Testament prophets like Zechariah and the time of Christ, John the Baptist was one of the most popular. People flocked to John way out in the desert, and he wore this strange getup and practiced a diet that would uninvite him to any Christmas party. Pass the insects, please. John's ministry capitalized on a popular apocalyptical thinking from the past few centuries. But that's what happens 
during empire, when the three evils, militarism, poverty, and racist xenophobia, combine to supplant the communal shalom that God wants for people. People suffering in empire want to hear about hope as a way out of the current mess. It happens in every empire, whether the Roman or the American. People are drawn to the idea, I am drawn to the idea of washing away all the bitterness of right now. Baptism, with all of that cleansing, then the Holy Spirit, the heavenly dove, can descend and make a home and sing a song without words. That thing with feathers requires us to prepare God's way not to prepare our way, to prepare the way of the Lord. All the drama of the past, all that baggage has to fit into one neat carry-on. I firmly believe God allows us one carry-on. Let the tired scripts wash away and then just watch, watch how your soul begins to revive just at the thought of reunifying with the love that made you. Another strategy that will prepare the way is humility, and John has it in spades. It's something in short supply here lately. But in the fourth gospel, John the Baptist actually says that he must decrease in order for Christ to increase. That's what I prayed for a moment ago, humility. And in today's reading, John says, I'm not even worthy to tie the thong of his sandals. That is quite a statement coming from a pastor who packed them out in the desert. Can you imagine? A televangelist saying that. Franklin Graham and Pat Robertson, I am praying for y'all right now. May you decrease and may Jesus increase. I pray that for every preacher in the world, myself included. What if churches and denominations tried that kind of humility, sacrificing our very institutions for the sake of the gospel? What if we decided that the best way to prepare the way was to get out of the way and let people see not us so much as the love that inspires us, the grace that forgives us, the hope that fuels us, the mystery that we cannot explain. Prepare the way for Jesus. Decrease me so that you may increase. John the Baptist quotes Isaiah 40 in today's reading. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This is so because God has spoken it. God's word is our hope. During this pandemic, I have spent a lot of time kind of daydreaming out the window. Watching sunsets has become like a daily art show in our western facing windows. And the birds, whoever knew birds were like interesting. The random murder of crows, the occasional hummingbird, the wayward hawk, and then those birds that migrate in formation. How do they do that? There's a special teamwork when geese fly in a V formation. As each 
flaps. The movement of its wings creates an uplift for the bird immediately behind it. By flying in this formation, birds can travel up to 71 times further than on their own. This can only happen in a group that cooperates. If we wear our masks and resist the soothing outrage that stir craziness ignites in each and every one of us, I see you. If we can resist that long enough and hang on to the rope of hope, we will make it through this long journey together. Now there are geese in the back of the formation whose job it is to honk from behind like preachers and prophets. Make the way straight. Hey you, put on your mask. Hey you, hang up and flap. Keep pushing ahead. We will get there together. It's not about any one of us. It's about all of us making it there together. Now when a goose falls out of formation, the drag on its wings signals it to adjust. When the lead goose gets tired of steering, it rotates back and honks unto others as it has been honked unto. The Canadian Community Network says that when a goose gets sick, two other geese fall out of the formation with their companion and follow it down to lend help and protection. They stay with their fallen. Like the geese, we know how to reveal the true nature of life inside ourselves, how to express it to the world. It's a little scary. It will take risks, but we must be true. We know how to help the fallen. We know that our highest goals will be achieved only when we work together in community, unified by common values. Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese harsh and exciting over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Hey.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please pray with me. Holy One, our souls cry out with joyful shouts. We know of the wondrous things you bring to the ones who wait. For God is good, God's steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And so we wait for the world to turn. Mighty God, remember, we remember all who hunger. Your son, Jesus, whose coming we proclaim, spreads a table of blessing before us and feeds us with his very presence. So in this meal, may our hopes be fed, may our courage be strengthened, wipe away all tears as the dawn draws near. For God is good, and God's steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And so we wait for the world to turn. O oh Lord, the nations rage, yet we remember who holds us fast. May your mercy deliver those in the conqueror's crushing grasp that they may know your peace. For God is good. For God's steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And so we wait for the world to turn. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal that we might be united with Jesus and with all who magnify his name. Sustain us with your presence and keep us faithful to the end. As we wait for the world to turn, O oh God, don't let us be complacent. Lead us into action that will feed the hungry and house the homeless, clothe the naked, and give mercy to the sick and those in prison. We pray with the one whose life is turning the world around. Let us pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Amen. Friends, on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And friends, in the same way after they had eaten took the cup and he gave thanks and he poured it out and he said this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for the forgiveness of the world friends as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim his saving death and life until he returns the gifts of god for the people of god thanks be to god Friends, as our offering is received this day, we think about the many gifts that we have already received. How can we share out of our abundance grateful hearts during this season of giving? So please give. There is an online offering plate at calprez.org where you can mail in your contributions to the church. For the many ways you have helped us uh, remain faithful throughout this pandemic, we are grateful. Thank you for your gifts.
Thank you for worshiping with us at Calvary Presbyterian Church. We hope you have found some hope to carry you through this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the good Lord lift up her countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.